Edge at 11 starts now. Our city may look blue, but we're not feeling blue. The spirit of Detroit currently, the spirit of Detroit Lions. Well, the team's success is quite literally improving our lives and taking us on some unexpected adventures. Fox News Jeff going to do that. Covering always usually the worst of the worst as our Edge reporter, but tonight is all about the feel-good stories and uh, going to the NFC Championship game. And Jessica, we're all so excited for this. You know, if I can crack a smile and talk about the Lions, it's a good night here on the edge. We are, of course, in front of Central Station in Corktown. Even through this crummy weather, you can see the Honolulu blue behind me. Now, this Lions fever that we have, uh, the Lions effect, whatever you want to call it, it's a real thing, and it's actually good for our mental health, whether you're a human or a dog. His palms are sweaty and he's weak. Whether you're a dog person or not, this is cute. There he is. <laughs> Meet Bobby, AKA Detroit Ambassador. He's been burning up social media feeds everywhere the last couple weeks, made famous with his lion mane gnawing on the opposing team's logos around town. And I was like, you know, it'd be hilarious if I just bought a lion's mane, put it on him, and see how people react. And people, absolutely loved it from day one much like the lions he's following this momentum right to san francisco we are outside of flagstaff in arizona this detroit pit with the grit needed to make the four-day journey by car with dad tom mcdevitt He's a professional snoozer, so I mean, he, he'll get used to it real quickly. Heading to San Fran simply to spread joy, like he's already done to millions. We'll call it the Lions effect, and it's a real thing. Last year, you started seeing more people wearing Lions gear, more people saying "Go Lions" at the end of conversations, and you know, it's just it just increased the amount of socialization. Dr. Morin Savanathan is a Henry Ford psychiatrist and the official mental health doc to Lions, Pistons, and Tigers players and coaches. And what you're noticing is people are getting together more. They are um, talking more, whether it's social media or in person, and that that social connectedness really helps against like depression or severe anxiety or seasonal affective disorder. There is some coping that goes along with being a Lions fan. Some advice from the doc for Sunday's game. Stick it out for all four quarters. Okay. There's always ups and downs. You never know how it's going to end. Bobby and his human already planning to take the W. If all goes well uh, out there and we win, then we have no other choice but to hang out on the west side of the country for a few weeks until the Super Bowl and then make our way over to Las Vegas. We'll, of course, be keeping tabs on that journey. Well, earlier this week, we told you about how Amon Ross St. Brown dyed his hair uh, blue, and that is all catching on. This is kind of the same thing, but for dogs. I just checked on Amazon. You can get one of those lion's manes for about 13, 14 bucks. And if you order tonight, it will be here by Sunday. Reporting live from Corktown, Jessica Dupnack on the edge. I'm going to be honest. That was my takeaway from this story is that <laughs> I have to uh, order for my three crazy dogs some of that lion. Fur, so we can all really be in the spirit on Sunday. But uh, in the meantime, we're all going to be thinking positive no matter what we're wearing. It is something good to focus on, especially with uh, the gray skies and uh, some of the bad things going on in our world. That's for sure. Yeah, the psychiatrist said no matter what happens, win or lose, we're building a dynasty here in Detroit. So many more wins to come ahead. Everybody loves a success story. All right, thanks, Jessica, for that report. Go Lions. Yeah, we're going to win this. Well, people are feeling good going into Sunday's game. We're not going to let some rain ruin our mood. But do we want to let you know that some steady rain and melting snow could lead to some pretty large puddles on your commute? We just saw in Jessica's story yeah. there. It's coming down, Rich, right now as we speak. Uh, it's going to be a rainy night ahead, and you can see why there's a large area of rain down over Illinois and Indiana northern Ohio covering southern Michigan so we could see close to a half an inch of rain overnight some pockets of heavy rain right now in and around Lansing you can see the deeper darker greens and yellows take a look at the numbers at Metro Airport 40 and 36 so the melting continues with the rain and with temperatures above 32 again the snowpack is getting less and less right now most of us in the mid to upper 30s these numbers will hold steady thankfully 
thankfully, the fog is uh, lifting just a bit because of the wet weather. There's a little mixing going on in the atmosphere, so the fog won't be as dense for the rest of tonight. But there's that breeze from the north and east, and that's a chilly breeze around uh, the southern Great Lakes. The warmer numbers off to our south, uh, Charleston, West Virginia, 60 degrees, then again, 35 up there in Ludington. Low pressure keeps us damp tonight and for tomorrow on the back side. There'll be some energy bringing more showers on Friday. Our forecast looks like this. Still some areas of fog and periods of rain for the rest of tonight down to 36. Tomorrow 40 degrees, but it's going to be damp at times again. That's your Friday forecast. Finally, some drying out goes on next week. Of course, Sunday is the big game. There's our forecast for us at 39. How about San Francisco weather? 64 degrees at kickoff with plenty of sunshine. We'll check it for you starting at 4 a.m. I told her about five cars in, in, in Michigan. Mainly, I uh, like off a of Joy Roller area. We're going to say um, Grand River for show. Sure. They're terrible. I don't know what else to tell you. Freeze, thaw, rain, snow. Guess what? One thing is for certain, pothole season is here with the weather doing a number on our local roads. We heard from drivers who have had enough of repairing their cars and trucks. Some hotspots for potholes right now include westbound 696 between Lasser and 275 and in Detroit, Central and John Cronk. Crews are working to patch things up, but as you know, it's only a temporary fix. Well, the highly anticipated trial against the mother of the Oxford High School shooter is now underway. During opening statements, the attorney for Jennifer Crumbly made the shocking announcement that Jennifer will take the stand during the trial. Shocking moments continued during testimony as prosecutor Karen McDonald accused the defense of acting overly emotional when the assistant principal was on the stand discussing the death of Tate Muir. To have not just the defendant, her lawyer sit there sobbing. So I, that, I did not. I, sob. I just, I, all my eye makeup still on. I checked my camera. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not having. I need to break. I, I need a break. Oh. That break was granted. Later in the day, the court played video of the Oxford High School shooter participating in target shooting at the driving range. Jennifer Crumbly's defense team is looking to paint the picture that the father, James Crumbly, was the one in charge of the weapon use. As for Jennifer taking the stand in her own defense later in the trial, it's a pretty risky move, according to legal experts. She doesn't know a lot about guns. There was actually some video where she was kind of fumbling how to even load a gun, how to put the magazine into the gun. Um, it was mostly, she's probably going to say that she was a good mother. It is dangerous to put the defendant on the stand. Um, and I would not tell the jury that in opening statement. I might keep that as my ace in the hole. But now it looks like it's committed. We're going to see Jennifer Crumley take the stand. And stay tuned for more of the Jennifer Crumbly trial. You can watch tomorrow's testimony live beginning at 9 a.m. on Fox2Detroit.com. You can also catch in-depth coverage of the trial during our newscasts. A disaster in Birch Run, a Michigan State police trooper hit and killed on I-75. 39-year-old trooper Joel Pop of the Tri-City Post was killed on duty Wednesday night. Pop and other troopers were investigating an impaired driver on northbound I-75 near the Birch Run exit. That's when another driver veered off the road, crashing into trooper Pop and two patrol cars. The trooper died from his injuries. We always talk about, you know, shootings and things like that. And I think that's what's everybody's mind. But um, the, these crashes, I mean, this is the uh, this will be the sixth trooper in our history now that's been hit outside of their car on uh, either policing a traffic crash or, or out on a, a traffic stop. Our thoughts are with the family of uh, Trooper Pop and the whole MSB family. The 81-year-old driver was also hurt and will now face charges. Trooper Pop leaves behind a wife and a young daughter. And, uh, of course, everybody is thinking about their family right now. Yes, our condolences to the MSP family as well. Well, the Grand Rapids police officer accused of killing a man during a traffic stop loses his appeal. This means that Christopher Schur will stand trial for the death of Patrick Leoya in 2022. The case caught national attention as cell phone video shows Leoya getting shot in the head after a struggle with Officer Schur. A new trial date has not been set.
Well, the state house's Republican leader is facing pressure now to resign. It comes amid a new report that he was investigated for domestic violence. The Daily Beast reports State Representative Matt Hall had been investigated for an incident against his girlfriend in 2019. Hall allegedly smashed his girlfriend's phone screen during a car ride to Indiana. Now a fellow lawmaker says what they're learning in the report is completely different than what they were told by Hall. When somebody repeatedly asks you to take them home, turn around, take them home, and you refuse, um, when somebody texts you from 911 and you ignore the text, uh, smashing somebody's cell phone who is um, in your car in, a, in an incident like this, I mean, and then denying all of it. Hall was never charged for this incident. We were unable to reach him for comment, but supporters of Hall slammed the Daily Beast article, calling it a partisan outlet.